Grab your popcorn, rip that ticket, get in that seat, lickety split it. Go watch a movie. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 140 of Go Watch a Movie. I'm Kelvin. And I'm Robert. Today, we are doing the five bloods, not to be construed with any other ones that start with a T. Um, but before we get into that, we're going to get into a little bit of entertainment news. Uh, first and foremost, uh, The Witcher, uh, The Witcher season two, uh, the showrunner came out with a little bit of info on The Witcher season two and I am uh, interested in this one. <laughs> I, think I wasn't. They left, they left you on uh, such a cliffhanger. You, I mean, you you feel. Oh, uh, you mean a hug? <laughs> yeah, I mean, all of it. They just. I feel like I I want to know what happens. I haven't. I don't think the first one's over yet. You haven't. That's why I'm interested because he didn't finish it. <laughs> yes. If he had finished it, I'd be like, okay, maybe I want to see a second season. Maybe I don't. But because you didn't finish it, of course I want to see it. You got me. <laughs> You got you me. Tell, I, I, guess I, I guess I sound a little angry about that. <laughs> I no, like, um, I get you. I was a little upset with that that ending as well. Um, but he said that he feels the first one explored the Witcher's solitude and everything like that. But now it's time to partner him up with some other Witchers, and everything's going to be in the present. Everyone will be in the present um, for the most part. So. Wow, which is, makes me happy because I, I well, all that time jump thing at first get confused me. <laughs> a part of the, what I liked about the first was that there was some time jumping. I didn't realize it until later, and then I'm like, oh, there's time jumping, and then I go, oh, I can't wait till they catch up so I can find out what's you know where's what's the present. That was part of what I liked about it because they were because if you're that old, then you would assume there's going to be some some time play with your memory and whatnot. So it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of cool that they incorporated that, but if they're taking that away, then it's just going to be a straight up action series with monsters and magic. Hercules <laughs> and Xena. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm just upset that it ended on a hug. Like that was my hope that we got all this backwards, forwards, mystery. When are we? What are we? Maybe but that's, then maybe that's, that's I see a hug. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's like a bigger thing. Maybe that maybe that's what life is all about. It just ends on a hug. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. No. You don't like that ending either. Oh, let me let me do his phrase. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know. We'll see. That's how, that's how the universe started. It was with a hug and then, then a big bang after. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> <It's gonna hurt. laughs> uh, moving on. <laughs> um, Ash. Ash and the Evil Dead. Um, mm-hmm. As we know, Mr. Campo said he's done with the character. Well, he has come out in an interview and said... There is talks of Evil Dead 4, yes, um, but it's time to move on from Ash. He said Ash has been, it's been proven that Ash can be done um, without him. So he is stepping down and there will always be always be an Ashley type character in the movies, but no more of the Ashley J. Williams. So I don't know. I'm a little upset about it. Yeah, it's sad. I mean, I like, I love me some Ash. It's like Indiana Jones. You really want to replace, I know they've tried or thought about it, but would you really want to replace, <laughs> you can't think, I mean, the the show is called Indiana Jones, the movies, you know, so yes. why would you want to, you can't just throw somebody else in there. Same way yeah. with Evil Dead, I associate Evil Dead with Ash, so. Uh, and his boomstick. Yep. <laughs> um, sharp smart, sharp as smart. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, I, the the cast said they wanted him back for more of the show, but of course, like I just said, he said he's done with that as well. He he said he's just, he's done with the character, which I get. He's an old man, older man. Sorry about that, Bruce. But uh, older man, you know, he and I'm sure he could still do it if he wanted to. But you know, I think I think the Ash story has been told and told well. So, but who's who could really take his place? Who's going to be the next chosen one? I mean, I just don't. Well, in that in that last uh, continuation sequel, I guess 
it was the the female girl, right? And mm-hmm. what do you think, think of that think, one? I, I, I thought that one was decent. I mean, it wasn't Ash, obviously, but I thought it was a much. It was a. It was like they took it more seriously. Mm-hmm. And then made a decent horror movie out of it. It doesn't compare to the originals, though. The first two yes. or, the, or the third one was just making fun of everything. So <laughs> it's not 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 the same, but it was still good. I mean, I, I thought it had some of the the spirit of just not the you know didn't really capture what the first ones were about. Agreed, agreed. Um, and that, but that's that seems like more of what we will be getting is is that style of. Uh, of, of Evil Dead, but we'll see. I mean, we can only we can only uh, wait to wait for it. <clears throat> but I will miss his rubbery. Only only he can do. But uh, yeah, uh, that'll bring us to let's discuss the showbiz. Um, exclus- exclusivity. Do you think? Sir, it is right for a streaming service or um let me give an example. Let's say AMC got the rights to a movie. Um we'll say a Walking Dead movie. And they said we're only releasing this at AMC theaters. You can't see it at your local landmark, your local whatever 14 your cell, your car mic, you can't see it anywhere else but an AMC theater. Not a good thing, right? Sucks, right? Yeah. yeah. That's not good. Well, I think the same can be said, even though it's a little different landscape, when a streaming service does this, and I'm talking Artemis File, exclusively on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. And I get it. You need people to watch Disney Plus. Um, Especially since a lot of the new content that they were wanting to put out has been pushed back and delayed. But I I don't see it as a good thing, as a good idea, because that's right. still narrowing down your fan base of of who's going to get to see that movie. What do you think? Yeah, I don't like it either. I don't like being forced to have to subscribe to something or whatever just to get the content from it. And this has been happening for a while and it's just been getting bigger and bigger. And then more things are opening up, you know, or starting and then making you want to, you know, subscribe to them just to get their stuff. I don't know. I would prefer a a wider venue. I mean, I would prefer something where you could get everything with one punch, but I don't see that ever happening because everyone's competing and competition in general, general is a good, is a good thing. You know, that, that helps push things forward and you get better content because people are, you know, in competition with each other. But in this case, I just feel like now I have to make these decisions on, you know, who am I going to watch based? I don't know if it's based on the type of content, but basically, Basically, I have to become like a tribal movie watcher. I have to say, oh, I'm going to watch movies made by Disney or I'm going to watch, you know, movies made by this, you know, Netflix because I'm, I have, you know, I can't get them all, can I? Or can I? I mean, it'll cost you pretty penny. You know, it's like that when your competition, yeah, when your competition starts bleeding in our pockets, it's time to stop the competition. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just found it. Like and and there are of course Netflix exclusives and and I and some of them are different. Like their shows are what are what's pretty much their exclusive thing. And Disney has its exclusive shows, which is not it's not the same thing as an exclusive movie in my opinion. Uh, because you, you know you have your Orange is a New Black exclusively on Netflix, which is fine, whatever. Okay, I get it. Uh, and then Disney has their. Uh, Lizzie McGuire, that's all that's coming around right now, smoothly on Disney. But when it comes to movies, like, well, for one, a lot of people weren't excited about a lot of the Netflix uh, <laughs> exclusive movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Artemis Fowl was supposed to be this big blockbuster. And if we weren't in this pandemic, everyone would have gotten to see it. So I think an exclusive move by that end is a little bit wrong i think they're hurting themselves because i don't think everyone's gonna want to i mean i would have gone to the movies to see it but i'm not gonna subscribe to a service to watch it yeah Yeah, i'll wait until it comes out or you know because a lot of the things that even like the shows that were specifically for 
you know, one service or another have come out later on DVD or something like that. I would actually mm-hmm. rather buy them that way than pay a subscription fee, even though it would be cheaper. Yeah. I hear you. That's weird for me to, you know, to do, but still, I'm like, cause I'm, that way I'm not being forced for the, you know, to pay your subscription. I'm, I'm just getting what I wanted. No, it's, yeah. Well, we'll see. Uh, hopefully there won't be the need for much more of this and, uh, will be, you know, going back to normal and everything will be going to theaters. Uh, fingers crossed. Some theaters will still remain open. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a question I would have to everyone out there. What do you think of the, the, uh, holding on to the movies that would have been wider to, you know, but general audiences, but for whatever reason now are just going to single streaming services. Uh, but that'll bring us to, Trailers. You first or me, sir? I'll go right ahead. Uh, I'm going to do one that kind of uh, was a, a, a scare of mine. I, I, I said this with the teaser that came out. Now that I've seen the full, tra- the new full trailer, <laughs> mm-hmm. it has kind of reiterated what I said. Uh, I feel like tra- Peninsula, Peninsula, the sequel to Train the Busan, is pulling a uh, Aliens and going full, full out on action movie. Uh, the trailer looks awesome though. Uh, you got your fast zombies. You got a squad going in to retrieve something. Um, and, you know, all the action you could want, explosions, uh, as we saw in the teaser, but they reiterated even more so a zombie fight club type of deal. Um, looks, looks awesome. Looks awesome, but it just doesn't have that same train of Busan feel. And granted, this is four years after that and set in movie setting terms. So I understand things are going to change and people have adjusted how they can, but, yeah, it just it just felt really, really different from the first. And I understand you don't want to make a carbon copy, but still. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're fine. You, you know what? It could be that they're just showing you all the action clips in the trailer, and then there's actually going to be a whole lot of content that we're just not, you know, going to be prepared for because we're going to think it's all action. That would be fantastic. I, mean, I, I hope we get that. <laughs> it could be a trick. But, yeah, it could be. I mean, yeah, I feel the same way about that one, but – I'm still, I still want to see it. All right. Mine, mine is, uh, Kevin Bacon. I think, I think Kevin Bacon is, I feel, I was thinking about Kevin Bacon. This is weird. And I I went back to all the movies that I've seen him in because I haven't seen them all. And I can't really think of one that I absolutely hated. And I definitely didn't hate any of his performances because he can play the good guy. He can play the bad guy. Creepy. He's played Mm -hmm. a pedophile. He's, I mean, he can go from good to bad like that and it's believable. So I'm, even yeah. though this movie isn't necessarily probably going to let, you know, Kevin Bacon show all of his range, maybe it will, I don't know, but I was just excited to see Kevin Bacon in a movie again that I was actually interested. And it's called You Should Have Left. And it's a little, little horror ditty. It's got him, they move into, he moves into a house with his family. Uh, it seems pretty typical for the most part, like it's some kind of a creepy haunted house that somehow has pulled him in for some reason. And they kind of reveal that maybe because he's a bad person and he got away with something that because they couldn't convict him of it, but maybe he really is guilty of it. Who knows? Uh, it's got some weird stuff like the out, like the inside of the house is smaller, but when you go outside to measure it, or I'm sorry, larger, but when you go outside to measure it, it's smaller. So there's some weird. Yeah, it's like there's some weird dimensional stuff going on, and there's a little bit of mystery. Plus, you got a great actor. You got Kevin Bacon. You got Amanda uh, Seyfried. Uh, hopefully, I said mm-hmm. her name correctly. She's a great actor. She does amazing work. And having these two people in there together, I think I think we might have a winner. Who knows? So mine is called uh, "You Should Have Left." Yeah, this one did look pretty awesome. I saw this one too, and he yeah he had disappeared from movies for for a while. He was doing a lot of a lot of TV, um, which is fine because. Uh, he, he's, he's still, like you said, he's a great actor, so no matter what you put him in, he, he can pretty much shine. But, yeah. Uh, that'll bring us to The Five Bloods. Watchbot, if you would not mind. 
four African American vets battle the forces of man and nature when they return to Vietnam seeking the remains of their fallen squad leader and the gold fortune he helped them hide. Director Spike Lee. Screenplay Spike Lee. Kevin Wilmot. Danny Bilson. Paul Demir. Thank you, watch, but um, Spike Lee. Spike Lee joint. You can hardly go wrong with a Spike Lee joint. Mm-mm. The last last one I loved of his was uh, Inside Man. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, he has a, a very, very different style, which stands out, and I really enjoy his style. And he, he even added some, some tricks, I feel, to his bag uh, with this one. Cause, and I don't mean like he's using tricks to, to pull you in, but it's just... Uh, you can, there, you can definitely see he's evolved, and that, and that, I, I love seeing that in directors, and it looks damn good. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I love the idea of this. I love it's coming at a amazing time of change in our in our uh, society in our world. So it's very 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 well timed, very well placed, and it's doing great. Um, and I think the acting was phenomenal. I think it looks amazing, and I just have one critique. Now, I've been around old men. I'm becoming one myself, and I'm not sure exactly the time period because of some of the dialogue of these old old guys. Mm-hmm. I was I was sitting back and like, I I I've been pretty sure I've been around men of their age. And the age they're portraying, I don't know that they kept that lingo even now in our time. They, um, you, they, some of them do. Some of them do. Do you think Jab Turkey? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that before from relatives. I haven't, I haven't heard yeah. Jab Turkey in so long. <laughs> yeah, they do. They keep some of the lingo. Uh, all right. They, well, they, 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 they are where they are aware that they're saying something that's dated though, because they'll get they'll look at you. But you know what that means, right? I'm like, yeah, I know what you got. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this movie was fantastic. I was I got it, I love the trailer. It got me interested, even though I am not into war movies. This wasn't He's necessarily not. a war movie. <laughs> this was not a war movie for me. Even though I had war movie moments, it was not a war movie. I was really yeah. able to get into this. It was weird that I did, because like I said, I usually don't gravitate towards movies with those themes. But this one, from the very start of the movie, sucked me in, because they used all the Im- like real-life imagery from historical moments. So it made it super real. It made it super grounded. It wasn't this fanciful thing. You know, if they hadn't, it would have just been like, yeah, right. These guys are going to go get this gold, they, you know, buried in Vietnam back. <laughs> it, did, it, means, it seems almost not nonsensical, but like unlikely, right? But when mm-hmm. they when they paired it with all this real life stuff, you know, all the horrors that happened, you know, if it was just 70 years ago, my math is probably bad, but it's just it's ridiculous that they were able to to, to tackle that and then meld the two together. I, my only critique. Which was a critique at first, but then I got used to it and I kind of, I don't know if I made an excuse for it in my head to why, but when they were doing flashbacks, uh, like Norman's character was obviously young, but then all the old guys were yes. still old. And then I'm thinking, why would they do that? It's because they would have cost too much money. But then I started to think, well, maybe they did it because it was more them reliving those moments instead of literally going back and then seeing those moments when they were young. It was like them reliving that I, stuff. I think it, it was also a, a testament to they never really left. Mm-hmm. Like they, they still, they still, because I, I, I actually was thinking that too the entire time. I was like, what? Wouldn't they just hire younger guys instead of like? Because a lot of the times they were in shadow or you know you, you barely saw them. But mm-hmm. but yeah, I think I think it was I think it was trying to make a, a point to yeah not to step on your toes here because you were actually sorry. <laughs> but no, yeah, fine. I think it was trying to make trying to make a point that like these these guys. Uh, they 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 still see him. That's the last time they saw him. They, he's frozen at that time for them, but they have clearly moved on. But not so much so that this war has left. Yeah, them. They, yeah, they've they've grown older, <laughs> but they're still in that place. 
Yeah, which, which made total sense to me. So I ended up appreciating that more so as I watched the movie as opposed to when I first saw it because I'm like, well, that's not very good. I didn't expect them to invest the kind of money like they did with uh, Gemini Man and make, you know, young versions <laughs> of each of them because that just would have been ridiculously expensive, I assume. Yeah. But yeah. I think the way that they tackled it, if they, if they were doing it because of a budget, that's fine because it worked. And then mm-hmm. if they weren't doing it for a budget, if they were making an artistic, you know, decision, then I liked it too because eventually, like I said, I grew to really appreciate that as opposed to my initial like why are they doing that mm-hmm. but, like and then and then the movie goes through all these moments like you said you, it's it's relevant to what's going on now it was so weird that they were able to make something that just seemed like they were making it because of, of what's going on now but they weren't yeah you know but the, at the same time it, it was super relevant so it it's it, for from for some I don't know how they got lucky but it just came out at the exact time that it kind of needed to to mm-hmm. To, for those things to match up, which is pretty amazing, I guess. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they added that last bit, um, probably uh, right, right, right before it went out there. But uh, yeah, they they don't they don't pull any punches with this movie, uh, nope. and I I really enjoyed that. Um, they, they you get slapped in the face like Robert said from the start with some very harsh reality and truths of what the world was like and what it kind of still has is going on like it's crazy and and, and we get we get and I love the way they he he masterfully him and the the writers masterfully suck you from our current day to this this bygone era and 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 you believe it you, mm. you're like oh okay so this is now i'm now i'm watching old footage from vietnam and this is this is what they're going through then and then but then you get tugged right back and put back in this real world and, and it kind of gives you gives you that feeling of i think what what like i said what these guys were going through like they this is how they live their life constantly you know? yeah. <laughs> I feel like they really also were able to early on help you like these characters or dislike them, depends on the character. From the get, like the character development was just spot on. And they didn't have to, they didn't overdo it, you know, they're going like doing flashbacks for every individual person's, you know, how their lives have been, you know, since the war, (laughs) but just, just enough to where you're like, you get it and you understand where everybody's coming from. Everybody was different. Each one of these guys, despite the fact that they were all bloods were individuals and they had lived different lives since the war, that thing that held them together. So I, I also really enjoyed that part that they made, they made everybody for me, even the one that even yeah, it's just even the one I didn't really like. I still I I still loved them for not because I didn't like them, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one meeting when they're all meeting up at the hotel early on was a, a splash, but a a large enough splash of who they all were to like like you said give give you enough like oh well so okay this is that one this is you know this is you know it, it just fits and worked so perfectly and and as a, as the story progressed we got to truly understand who these people were and it just works it it, it works so well what do you think of the acting here all the actors the- i thought the acting was great i really do i think uh i gotta give it to uh the character's name was paul uh, delroy yes. lindo i think he yes. I think he's the standout character in the entire movie. He did Perfect. so much. It was ridiculous. You, you get, you see so many highs, so many lows. You, I mean, it was ridiculous how much they gave this guy and what he was able to work with and just, just spit out. I don't know how much of it, if any of that was just, you know, off the top of his head or, or if, 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 it, was, if it was all scripted, but the performance was great and I can't, I can't knock anything he did in the movie. Yeah. We, I was going to make the comment respectfully to everyone else, but he put this movie on his back. And, and that's not to say that the other people were uh, bad, mm-hmm. but he for sure put this movie on his back and carried it hard uh, just by just by putting out a acting clinic. It was fantastic what he did. Uh, and, and, and like I said, that doesn't take away from everyone else because everyone, everyone, I think, did a fantastic job in this movie. The little we saw, uh, OBP, Black Panther, Chadwick Boseman was fantastic. 
just I mean, a great story, gripping story. I kind of felt like, <laughs> like, uh, you were saying earlier how the gold, them hunting, going back and finding gold was kind of ridiculous. I was like, I was watching it like, man, this is like, uh, city stickers, but with more danger. Yeah. <laughs> city stickers exactly. too, the legends of curly gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it just works. It, it works so well. Um, <laughs> You want to go down this list of characters? What do you think yeah. of uh, his son, David? I mean, again, everybody did a good job. I can't, yeah. I, I can't really knock anybody. It was, it was believable. Uh, I, I think it was more because of of, of uh, Delroy, but I've, I mean, you've actually felt like a bond between the two. Yeah, like you, you felt that you know, even though the the dad was messed up in many different ways, there was still a love there. He, he just couldn't. Couldn't really, I don't know. I don't want to say communicate it because he could, but it's just I don't know. I think it's uh, uh, yeah. His another sorry, good. His difficulty is really st- put a barrier in between him and what uh, could have been a much more loving relationship. Yes, uh, but yeah, yet another thing that's tackled, I think, because uh, a lot of black fathers have not even the, the just gone to the war, but just in general have this this separation from their their children and mm-hmm. i think it was displayed so well in this and and, and, and they and they tackled it from two fronts from uh, otis's character as well as paul's character yes because otis didn't know about that particular daughter but still mm-hmm. uh yeah he was more than willing to be there for he, he was uh yeah I, I really enjoyed otis otis was was very cool uh, you want to get into the spoiler territory here? Might as well. Okay. I mean, this is a very long movie, so it's not going to be full on coverage, but it is, there's some shockers that I did not see coming. The landmine thing. <laughs> I saw, you know what? I saw that coming. Mm. And when they started digging for the gold, this is when it clicked. Mm-hmm. They were digging for the gold. And I'm thinking, you know what? Those, see, they just met. One, I knew that, uh, the girl that David met, what was her name? Heidi or something. Uh, yes. was, uh, because I know that I've seen that actress before. So I knew she had a bigger role than just being the, you know, girl that they're going to meet in that bar. And, and they're great and foreshadowing like, though. Yeah, and and then I saw, and then when they talked about what they did, they they you know went out after bombs or whatever, and then they're out there digging with these shovels. I'm thinking, oh my god, there's a bunch of bombs in Vietnam still. They haven't been. Exp- I mean, they're probably going to hit one. I just didn't know when they were going to hit it. And then it kind of they almost they almost gave it away because the guy was you know waving the golden air and he was backing up. It was almost <laughs> more than obvious what was about to happen. So that was not a shocker for me. Yeah, I would. I. Uh... I was a little blown away. Uh, I, I thought one of them was gonna die, um, <laughs> but I thought it would be the wise, the wisecracker, and not the way that he did. But uh, yeah, that that one uh, caught me a little bit off guard because I was like, that dude's just trying to, you know, we just got the big, the big reveal that he's actually broke, and and, and I was like, oh my goodness, you know, this they're not gonna, they're not gonna do anything to this guy. But it, I thought honestly, I thought when David. For, Cause I got, I kind of made that connection as well, um, with her, with Heidi. I was like, when David was digging for that gold, I was like, and I, or not digging, but digging and go poop. I was like, oh no, not like this, not mm-hmm. David. Uh, and then he, and then he heard that cl- first clink. I was like, oh shit, here he goes. But, right. you know, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um, and, but I thought, I thought each, they made each thing, each, each kill meaningful. It wasn't yes. just like a, a overblown, but uh, we're just doing this to do this. Everything felt like it meant something in this movie, and I, I, I love it. I love the the, uh, the, the even saving David. I, I don't want to talk too much about some of the things because it was it's done so well and it's worth seeing. So so worth seeing. But uh, any standout moments for you in this one? Oh man, I can't even pick one. There is just so many of them. They go from thing to thing. Uh, oh, this is a tough one. I don't know. I gotta, uh, I gotta say the whole, the whole thing basically stands out. 
for me. Like I can't, like, like I said, I went into it again, not, you know, I'd like the trailer, but, uh, but I usually put up a, a wall after that. Like, okay, this may not be what I thought it's going to be. And it wasn't exactly, it was more. And I just got sucked into it. That's the biggest thing for me is that I was, I, that I was able to get into the characters so quickly and care about what's going to happen to everybody. I felt like I was in the jungle with them going on in this, going on this adventure as opposed to just watching some old guys, you know, fart around in the jungle. <laughs> Get too over this shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Paul's, Paul's, uh, they'll, they'll always break down, I think, for mm-hmm. me. Um, after he separates from everybody, I just freaking, I was clinging to every word and this, his eyes and his, his movements, his performance and that scene just were, uh, just fantastic. And then the big reveal, which won't sound here. Uh, but man, it, it, uh, there's only, there's nothing really bad. Like I said, other than me jokingly kind of critiquing the dialogue. Um, <laughs> <'cause> of, <laughs> I, that's I, how people talk. I'm telling you, I've seen them do it. I felt a little, a little bad, not a little bad, a lot of bad for David because this guy is torn and he wants to do what's right. But at the same time, he has a, a sick father because, you know, PTSD is a, is a sickness. And like, how do you cope with that? What do you do in that situation? Do you, do you, do you go along with your father? Do you like, cause this is the teacher, you know, he, he's, he's, he's probably thinking about like, man, what would I tell my students to do here? You know, what would you do in that situation? That's what, I mean, the fact that he was a teacher yet still at the same time, he was kind of a, kind of a student. You know, because his dad was obviously the the alpha, and he just followed because he was still wanting the admiration and or respect from his dad, and also the love because he's. I mean, he obviously feels responsible for something. I don't want to give it away because that's a big reveal that I think is worth having in the movie. So I feel like personally, I feel like he should have rebelled earlier, and then. I, but I can see why he didn't, and you find that out why you find out why in his reveal. So, yeah, yeah. Was that was that him at the end there signing away the checks? Um, I don't know if it was all him or not. I I yeah, think because like, I saw him like, yeah, it could have been because he did tear a check off. I don't know if it was him actually getting one or writing one, but yeah. regardless. Uh, I'm, I'm glad he, uh, spoilers, I'm glad he survived. Yeah. Cause, uh, yeah. yeah. I kinda, I mean, everybody else do die. I could kinda, I see why they would. I'm glad mm-hmm. not everybody in the movie died, but I can see the ones that did die, I kinda see why. And then the ones that survived, I can, I can, it makes sense to me. Yeah. Yep. For sure. For sure. Otis, Otis had some unfinished business. Yep. Um, which I'm glad they and that was a him su- super touchy moment without giving it away. I thought that was. I think we may have already given it away. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it was still. I mean, because it, it goes against what I mean. Some stereotypes are so to see that you know level of closure, or maybe not. Well, maybe it wasn't closure. Maybe it was like oh, an opening of something. You know. Yes. New. So I, I liked seeing that. How do you feel? This is. Uh, this is not really nothing against the movie, but this is a Spike Lee thing. How do you feel about his trademark of the drifting towards the screen thing? I don't think it was needed for this one. And I get it. It's his thing. It's his stamp. But I, and, I, and it was at the end, but I, I didn't really, I was like, oh, didn't need that. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, it's his thing. Everyone's got their thing. That's true. I mean, but, I, mean I think uh, for whatever reason he likes it. He should use it. Is it a thing that you enjoy? <laughs> um, it's not necessarily. I mean, it's good. It's it's nice to know w- without being told what whose movie you're watching. Yeah, true. You yeah. know, and you, you can recognize that. Huh? That's clearly. That's clearly. You know, that's in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? I do. Uh, well, I do want to point out. I really like that they didn't overuse Chadwick. They didn't over, they didn't overdo him. I love that they didn't overdo him. Cause I, cause you know, he's probably like, I don't want to say he's the biggest star there just cause he's, he had some success with, you know, 
off with with the obvious movie, but the fact that they didn't overuse him, I thought it was great. They just just enough because he was kind of like that legendary figure for all these other guys. So and they kind of use that just just enough to give you that without giving you all Chadwick, you know. Yeah, because they they could have very easily just been like, yeah, you're gonna chew up some scenery here, Mister Boswell. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, but I'm glad they showed they showed these guys respect because they were all legends in their own right, you know. Um, and they they proved that they, they're still legends because at the end of the movie yes. they were like, you thought these old guys are, are in trouble. No, the other people were in trouble. These old guys are professionals. They you know, <laughs> they've been here before. I say my first rodeo, home slice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to uh, add some of those to my lexicon, so get ready for that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> How old is he really? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, any, anything else before you want to add? I don't, we can go on for a while, I'm sure. Yeah, this, this, is, good, yeah, this, this is a great – I think, think it's a great movie. It was refreshing to see this one. I mean, I, I feel like – and it was, so, like I said, right at the right time. I, I, uh, a lot of people, not everybody's going to be comfortable with all the language in the movie. However, I think you should look from the standpoint that's how a lot of people really do talk. So, I mean, bear with it if you do have a problem with it. Yeah, uh, here's my thing. That's one thing I actually enjoyed other than some of the older terms. I actually enjoyed that this movie, the dialogue felt real. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't like uh, uh, you were talking now. Now I am talking. Now you're talking. I am talking. You're, you know, it was mm-hmm. it was just a straight up. It was like a real conversation would be. It was it was very just very well acted, very well shot. Um, just just an amazing job on this. Amazing job. Um, yeah. Uh, you have Rotten Tomatoes put up it, sir. Yeah, I'm a little a little disappointed. Um, the critics critics gave it a 92 percent, which I kind of expected. Really good. I, I I would give it a higher number than mm-hmm. that. But the audience score was only fifty nine percent. So oh, the audience audience wow. isn't loving it. Mm-hmm. And I just I just ate this movie up. I want to hold my comments because uh, I can. And I'm trying to think of the reason why your your average audience you know oh, wouldn't wouldn't I'm sure wouldn't you buy. And I don't know, it, sir. I don't. I really don't. I mean, I'm trying to think. Why wouldn't somebody like this movie? And I, I really, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna assume. Don't assume. Um, don't do it. Don't assume. Okay. Don't do it. Okay. <laughs> just, just we'll leave it a mystery. I don't. Okay. I, I think it. I think it's worth. I mean, maybe people just didn't want to give it a shot. Maybe some people just think, you know, it's. But it's number. It's in the it's number ten Lee. spot on Netflix. Yeah, it's Spike Lee. Maybe I'm not going to like it because it's Spike Lee. No, you should. You should give this one a shot. It's yeah, a it's I a think, breath, breath of fresh Vietnam air. <laughs> <laughs> I think he proved that he can do more than his average Spike Lee joints with Inside Man, and I think to judge somebody because it's a, it's a, to judge him because you see it's a Spike Lee joint uh, is no, there was a time where you could do that. You you could say, okay, I know what this is going to be, but there is that is has absolutely been erased for me, uh, but. Um, just the fact yeah. that it's culturally significant. I mean, it's, it's, it's on par with the times. I mean, I feel like we all are, you know, on this planet together at the same time. We, we should all know everybody else's history. You know, we should all respect each other. I mean, so why not give something a shot that isn't your normal cup of tea? I mean, learn, learn about a culture that isn't yours or, or a part of your culture that you don't know a lot about. It, it's, it's a healthy thing. It's a good thing. We should all do it. I've said my piece. Agreed. Agreed. Um, on that note, uh, where you can find us, you can find us at gowatchmovie.com, uh, the one-stop shop for all things entertainment. The movie news that we read is there in more detail. The trailers, I will get them up. Um, what am I missing here? Uh, where you can find us as far as the podcast, because this is also a podcast as well as a YouTube show. Uh, anywhere podcasts can be played, that's where. And leave comments on those. Subscribe. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And uh, we I love the interaction that we'll be getting. And we'll just keep on doing that. Just trying some new things here, seeing what sticks. You guys let me know what you don't like and what you do. And we'll adjust accordingly to an extent. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, that's episode 139. I'm Kelvin. And I'm Robert. Go watch a movie. Grab your popcorn, rip that ticket, get in that seat, lickety splicket. Go watch a movie!